I can do it. Hey. All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the meeting of Lewiston Parish Council, the regular meeting, June 28, 2018. Um, everyone, please stand. Shame Ladies and gentlemen, we have here Pastor Jason Ogle. He is the pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church out in Albany, Louisiana. Been there about a year. He has a beautiful family. His wife, his wife is named Tracy. He has a son named Personal lives, blessing their relationships, their business, their employment. God, I pray that you would give them strength and let them see that you're with them. Most of all, God, I pray that you give them wisdom as they make decisions that affect us all. Father, I pray that you give them insight that makes this community a better community, that helps us to reach that tomorrow that we all want. And Father, I pray that you would also bless us, the citizens of this parish. God, help us to realize that. We all carry a responsibility to every day make this a better place. Help us not to simply rely on the parish leadership and the employees, but to see that we have a part. Help us to love each other, to care for the hurting and the broken and the poor. And God, we ask that this little section of Louisiana that you've blessed us with, that you give us the wherewithal to make this a little slice of heaven. God, would you help us to work hard toward the things that we agree on? to have patience with, you, with each other and grace with each other on the things that we don't agree on, and that we all pass down to our children and our grandchildren a better community. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Mr. Avery, lead us in the pledge. Yes, sir. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Saying that you saw a roll, please. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Ord. Here. Mr. Watson. Here. Mr. Donahue. Yeah. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Harris. Here. Mr. Dalbert. I'd like to remind everyone uh, if you have a cell phone to please mute it or turn it off. We will also allow public input uh, when we come to a agenda item that you would like to speak on, please come to the podium and state your name and your address and we will give you time to speak. Item 8, adopt the adoption of the minutes from the June 14, 2018 regular meeting of the council. Motion by Mr. Gerlinghouse, second by Mr. Talbot. Any comment from the public? Any comment from the council? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Item 9, Parish President Report, Mr. Layton. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first item, well, the only item I have, the, the Watson Scientist Project. I know y'all remember at some point in the past. Uh, Mr. Layton, you
other side be in the median or will be to the side? That's the issue. I'll second that, Mr. Calvert. Mr. Sandy, you got. Man, you know something? I know. Yeah. You're not going to get me in that crowd. <laughs> I mean, but next year, when we try to incorporate once again, it's going to be You're not going to get me. That crap is, that, that sign is way north of where that last boundary was. You're not going to get me in that crowd. That's, that's just a sign introducing you. Welcome to Washington. Yep. Yeah, that's, yeah shocker, that's huh? right, <laughs> Mr. Washington. <laughs> so we got a motion from Mr. Talbot. Second from Mr. Washington. Is there any comment from the public on this? Any more comment from the council? Ms. Sandy, please call the vote. <laughs> Mr. Everett. Yes. Mr. Mine. Yes. Mr. Orr. Yes. Mr. Washington. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Mr. Yes. <laughs> Thanks if I ask questions, I told him that it's that's legal. <laughs> 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 I just know who's responsible when I run into the sign and hurt myself. That's Gary. Oh, yeah, call Gary. Well, don't if back. you run into the sign, you <laughs> drive on something you're not supposed to be driving on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep a stop sign up at Walmart. That was a valid question, thank you. Oh, thank you, Council. Thank you. Is that the vote? Item B, I don't have the, the ordinance in front of me. Sandy, do you have uh, introduction of order setting the millage rates as adjusted for the tax year? Uh, read, read by title. Yeah, this is just an introduction. Yeah, I mean, I just, I mean, that's the only thing. That's the only question I have. 
And, and to be, be fair, just to clarify, this is just housekeeping in a sense. These aren't millages that we're voting on. We're just. Oh, well, I mean, I understand, but, but the parish village at 2.32 started out one day at 5, and now it's down to 2.32. So my question is, just because it started at 1.5 doesn't mean to mean it needs to stay at 1.5 if they've got a surplus money in the account that they don't have anything earmarked for. Uh, that was this my is, only deal on that. And this is the introduction. What yeah, that typically, he comes, yeah, typically yeah. he comes and, uh, and the assessor does, too. That's fine. So. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Talbot, second by Mr. Garland. Any comment from the public? More comment from the town. Stand call for the vote, please. Mr. A. Yes. Mr. Mann. Yes. Mr. R. Yes. Mr. Watson. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. 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 Thank you, Council. Well, I wish all of you a happy Fourth of July and be safe. Yeah, that's why I'd be careful, y'all, too. Thank you. Item 10, Office of Homeland Security. Mr. Harrell is not here. He wanted me to tell y'all that he loved you. I'm sure he did. He didn't call me, but I'm sure he would want me to. Yeah, I'm a pretty good guess right there. <laughs> Starting to look like him, too. Yeah, like I don't look like him. I'm about the same height. We're going to go hunting together soon. <laughs> Item 11. That'll be a week of fun, I right think. Uh, Item 11, public hearing and adoption of LP ordinance number 18-18, removal of abandoned and an operative vehicle. Good night. Yes. <clears throat> the first thing I would like to say is that in 1997, over 20 years ago, the council adopted an ordinance uh, the name of that ordinance, uh, removal of abandoned and or inoperable vehicles. Okay. Um, in addition to that, the ordinance lists out uh, definitions of what an inoperable abandoned vehicle is. It talks about how to notify the public, uh, residents of Livingston Parish, how to go about doing that. I, I see as a well-written uh, ordinance, okay? In addition to that, I'd like to say that there's a state statute that authorizes local governments to uh, adopt such an ordinance, okay? The state statute also defines what an abandoned vehicle is, and, you know, junk car is, that type of stuff. Um, I guess over four or five months ago, uh, the Department of Public Works director uh, recommended a couple of changes to this particular ordinance, modifications. Those modifications, to me, are positive changes to an old existing ordinance, okay? I'll go over those two changes real quick. They're pretty short. I've talked to a lot of people over the last week about this particular ordinance. It seems to me that most of those that oppose this ordinance, they have issues with the original ordinance. The modifications that's being uh, voted on tonight, adopted tonight, seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, that the majority are okay with those changes. So going forward, you know, listening to the public come up and talk and the councilmen talking amongst each other, I'm open to go with what's best, we all think is best for Livingston Parish. Um, if, if we so deem, we could go back and look at the old original ordinance. And it's, it's, it's possible that that ordinance needs more modification, okay? But no, but no tonight, regardless of how you vote on this or how you feel about this, the ordinance is already in place, the law is already in place, and that 
the Department of Public Works and the Compliance Office of Livingston Parish have the authority uh, as defined in the ordinance to remove uh, old, abandoned, uh, inoperable vehicles from private property. And whether you agree, like I say, whether you agree with that or not, I, I, I am willing, because I got mixed emotions about it, I am willing to give it as much time as it takes in ordinance committee meetings to, to get it right for the residents of Livingston Parish. Whatever it takes. Now, you're welcome to not take my word for any of this. You're welcome to go and do your research, pull the ordinance that was written in 1997, that's currently on the books now, I'd be willing to email it to you. If I got it on file, I'll email it to you. If you call me, text me your address, I'll email it to you. Um, and then also, you can have a copy of the adopted ordinance tonight, if it's adopted, you know, to show that the changes that we're talking about tonight. Now, the changes tonight are very simple. It, te it, it basically says that if an abandoned vehicle is towed, that it needs to be in a secure yard. Uh, the yard is designated piece of property that is enclosed by a fence, a barrier, uh, at least six foot high. It also says all abandoned and or inoperable vehicles that are removed under authority of this ordinance will be moved by a state licensed record service. It says the wrecker will be dispatched from a rotating wrecker list established by the Director of Public Works. The one thing I can say, maybe I've said more than one thing, but one thing I can say is, is if I had an old abandoned vehicle in my, in my yard and it was towed, I would want it to be towed by a licensed wrecker service. And I would want it to go to a secure yard, fenced in, so it could be protected in case I wanted it back. And saying all of that, uh, that's all I really got to say about it. I, I, I mean, do we make the motion now? Do we make the motion after the? the uh, yeah, yeah, we do that. We do it in a public hearing, huh? Yeah, we gotta wait till it close. Okay. We're okay. in the public hearing. Okay. The, the problem I have with this ordinance is, is being to go being you can go on a person's private land and take a vehicle off from it. To me, that's a no no. That's my opinion. You know, I don't have a problem with going and getting an abandoned vehicle somewhere where we got the right to do that. Uh, one, I don't remember one of the councilmen was telling me there's a cul-de-sac in one of the subdivisions. It's a vehicle park back there in the middle of the cul-de-sac. Yes, that needs to be gone. But when you can go on people's private land and get it, I, I personally have a problem with that. You can do it now. That's what I'm saying. I, I have a problem with that. Though. Well, yeah, but it's state law that allows us to do it. I understand I mean, that, and I have a problem with that here. All we're to do is qualify where they go so that they're, <clears throat> so they're put in the area that's safe. Okay, don't, I got no more questions. Gary, don't you rebuild trucks and stuff? I got old. Yeah, I got an old sixty five okay. Chevrolet. Okay. You got it. So you got it parked out in front of your house. You've been working on it. Your neighbor calls you, calls and complaining in on you. Right. But that gives them that if they go there and condemn. I mean, not condemn, but think that it's a problem for your neighbors. They can come tow your well, truck. Correct if, or not? If you read the process, correct or no, not? No, not correct. Okay. Because Why the process not? is that that. That if a complaint's called in, the compliance department will come out there and make an evaluation, talk to you, give you an opportunity to resolve it if they determine there's a problem. The towing only is a last resort. I, I understand Because there are a group of people that refuse to comply that. with the law I, I, if the law's a problem. I mean, if, the, if their vehicle's right. a problem. Just because right. it offends your neighbor doesn't make it a violation of the law. I understand that. Okay, I, so, I totally so all we're doing is quantifying that if... 
you refuse after the compliance offer officer has given you the opportunity to resolve it, then and only then will they tow it, which they have the right to do now. We're just quantifying where it goes and how it's I, stored. I understand what we're doing people. there. I do. I totally understand what we're doing there. It's got to go to a secure yard with a six foot fence. So the, the, the whole ordinance of the, the reason, we're, I, I, we need to the reason we're adjusting the ordinance is because the director of DPW wants to put the vehicles in a particular place in a that will be protected. He, I mean, and I think the situation is they get to a certain point and at that point in time, they can go get them. They don't know where to put them. Right. They don't want the liability of towing them and have to maintain the security. So we're fixing it so that if they get to a point where the citizen will not comply with the order, that they feel with the vehicles in violation. No, I mean, just because somebody complains doesn't make you in violation. I don't know that. That they can tow it to an area where it'll be protected and they're not liable if something happens to in the future. I know that's, that's what we're that's the on only tonight. reason that we're amending this order. I know that's what we're voting on tonight is to where to go to a secure yard. Yeah, and you don't disagree about that part. I it's do not the disagree. As a whole it's the ordinance as a whole. Well, that's not, that's then, something I mean, we need to revisit. Then, let's, is what then, I'm then that's fine. If you want to revisit the ordinance, right. we can revisit the ordinance. Let's fix right. the problem right now so that we can put it in an area that's secure, that the parish doesn't right. feel like they have any liability. And then if you want to come back and visit the ordinance again, you can come visit. That, that's, I but think that's what we need to do. Don't, don't create an ordinance that's, here that's contrary to state law. I mean, state law is established, and all this ordinance does is follow state law. So right. all we're doing right now is creating a situation that if they de if DPW determines that they've contacted the citizen, their vehicle is a hazard, they've given them every opportunity to resolve it, and they choose not to resolve it, right. then they have a they, we have outlined the ordinance where they take it yep. and how they take it. That's the whole point. And, before they they can tow it where they're going to tow it to, and Nobody if it gets knows. torn up, it's it's yeah, I mean, it's ultimately the parish responsibility. So we're going to take it to security. <clears throat> that's that's the whole point of the, the amendment, right? And I, and I do agree with that. I mean, I think it's, I think Shane hit it earlier. If 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 we want to revisit the ordinance, then schedule ordinance committee and let's revisit it. I think we need but, to. But but if but all we're doing tonight is fixing a problem. Well, just one quick thing, too. I think you're going to find that a large percentage of these are going to be people who just have vehicles in their lot, but they don't know what to do with them. They, they, they are going to like, you're going to go, hey, we're going to do the assessment on this, and they're going to say, look, if you take get rid of it, that'd be great. Take yes. it. They just don't know and what to do. and, and I, I it know. doesn't cost That's the right. parish anything. So it's, it's going to fix a big problem that exists right now, people willing willingly saying take it. Right. You know? And if you're a citizen that, that that has let's say like I had an old sixty five pickup truck. I mean I've it's been sitting on my it runs now, we drive it around, but before when it was being repaired it just sat there. It's also antique too. Yeah, well I mean but nobody I mean nobody nobody complained. So this ordinance didn't even apply to me. If if DPW hadn't come to visit you about your are at your house this ordinance this change doesn't affect you because nobody's complaining you're not in not compliance and so there's no reason for you to even consider being towed i mean so the there are very few people that this ordinance is actually going to affect you know in the parish and so you know it's but I feel the majority of the people it's going to affect is going to affect positively because they're going to they're going to be informed and say hey right. i have this old vehicle here Come get it, please. Yeah. And then, so, and then the, the record yard can then, if nobody comes and gets it, yep. can do what they need to do to, to, to recoup their right. money. I mean, for the you know, it, and so everybody to win for everybody. But like you know, I know we got some people in all this one talk. As far as secure yard, if they pick it up, and, like I said, the, the the ordinance is already on the books. Nothing we can do about that right now. But. If they do come pick it up, it's going to go to a secure yard, whereas before we didn't know where it was going. Correct? Pretty much. Right. Yeah, before, yeah. before we didn't know where it went. Before we would have to hire somebody to tow it, and I guess right. we'd have towed it over to Iowa Street and just parked it, and it would you know what right. I'm talking about. Yes. So consequently, we didn't do anything. Yep. And so the reason for fixing this, the reason for doing this, is so that when you get to that point where 
You know, you just seen the picture of one guy pulling on one end of the reins and the mule sitting on his behind. Yeah. When you get to that point, we now have a place to go pick the car up and put it. I understand that part of it. Sure. Mr. Keene, you had something? Yeah, well, I talked to Mr. Sam about this because I've gotten calls just like everybody else. Purple Martian. Uh, he didn't call, but his sister did. Um, you know, and their concerns were, what if somebody's just mad at you and they're going to call and say, that's why they're going to go in it. They're going to send a compliance officer out. They're going to look at it and go, well, this is 800 yards from that guy's house. You know, he... And, and they're going to make common sense, I know that's hard to believe, common sense decisions on this thing as to whether it really is a problem. They're not just going to go, oh, yeah, they call, so it's got to go. Uh, there are people, Mr. Sam told me today, a lady called and said, oh, I'm glad y'all enacted this ordinance. I have an old broke-down vehicle in the front yard that I just can't afford to get rid of. So yep. it'll take care of that problem, you know without us costing anything. Before, if we'd sent somebody out, it cost the parish the record service money and everything else. And that's what we're trying to do. Any more comment from the council? I have, I have uh, two comments, I guess you could say. I had a phone call from a good friend of mine. And he told me, he said, well, Mr. Harris said, I'm gonna tell you real quick, I'm against this argument. I said, well, tell me why. He said, because I don't want you coming on my place, grabbing my vehicles and towing them off. I said, it doesn't work like that. And I explained the situation, you know, that they have people going to go out and look at them. And I said, uh, where do you have these vehicles? He said, in the middle of 75 acres. I said, Nobody's ever going to complain about that. I can promise you that. Nobody even knows they're there. <laughs> And then he has some more on another piece of property that's 200 acres. And he has some heavy equipment and whatever they got through with it. And you know how it is all up and down a river when you're digging sand or dirt or whatever and something breaks down. Well, it usually stays right there for quite a while. And he said, yeah. I said, well, nobody ever cl complains about it now. He said, no. I said, well, you're going to be the same. Yes, I hope no, 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 we're, we're going to have public input in a second yeah we'll finish uh, with the council. all right then the second thing is i got a call from a man and he said i'm glad y'all got this ordinance going i said well i appreciate that he said the thing is my mother has five or six vehicles sitting in her yard and it's on a little lot and i told her she had to get rid of them and she said no said I don't have to get rid of them. He said, yes, you do. They have passed an ordinance. They're going to pass an ordinance where you can't keep them here. He said, I was just so happy. Now <laughs> she's got to get rid of them and yeah. clean up the lot. But the ordinance is already in place. This lady is like 80 years old. This is her. This is her. This is her. This is her. Okay, hope, 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 hope. I, I, I got one thing to say, and then we'll we'll go into the public hearing. Um, my my question is: is has anybody reached out and spoken with anybody with the record company? Because the way I look at it, I mean, we're saying it's not going to cost the parish any money. So they have to send a wrecker to go pick this vehicle up. They have to bring it to their yard. They're going to keep it probably 40 days before everything's clear. If this theirs, now they got to pay someone to pull the gas tank out, have it crushed, and then they got to take it to a scrapyard to get what little money they get for a crushed vehicle. So, have we reached out to them to see is this something that we're going to have a problem with? Because, I mean, they have to be able to make some money off of this. I mean, we can't just make them go pick up vehicles when people call and they're getting nothing out of it. That, that's a very. That's a very good point, Jeff. Uh, I did not reach out to any of their record services. Uh, from what I understand, I did talk to Sam about it. Sam reached out to the record services. And to the best of my knowledge, that what they're going to do if the residents don't want the vehicle after they tow it, the record service has agreed to salvage the vehicle and accept that as compensation for towing it off the property which goes back to what Tracy said, it's not gonna cost the actual parish any extra fees. Now, if 
if we we want to table this and go back and confirm that we can but uh, you know um, look I got a business if people abandon them I call record service they're glad to come they're glad to come get them because they're gonna they're either gonna charge the citizen when they come pick it up or they're gonna wrap it later on or get a salvage title or get a salvage title I'm, trust me it's not gonna be an issue and that's what they do. Yeah. The record company is going to be glad to come get it. That's not the issue. The issue is there are people that are concerned that they don't like the ordinance, but but we're going to be able to we're going to initially be able to get rid of some vehicles that need to be put and we'll be put them in a secure area, and then those citizens can get them at a later date, or you know, at your expense. Right. But you're only going to have to incur the expense <laughs> if you don't if you don't comply with the compliance officer. Okay, all right, we need to move. All right, we're going to, on this item right here, we are now entering a public hearing. So if there's any comment from the public, come to the podium, state your name and your address. My name is David Semino. I live at 24811 4th Street in Holden, uh, Louisiana. I have a couple of questions. Just Again, I just made a comment, and I know I spoke out of turn. I apologize for that. However, if the parish has not taken into account that they're going to enforce a 21-year-old ordinance, and now all of a sudden they want to do that by making changes <clears throat> or making it better, for who? And if you're going to come on private property to seize private property and I have to pay you for that for you taking my property who is to say what is a blight vehicle junk vehicle abandoned vehicle on private property how do you determine that what makes that description valid and who makes that decision and why why does one individual or a group of five, six, seven, eight individuals that are governed for me, or governing for me. I'm the governed without due process. Now, due process means that as an individual, I have the right to keep my effects unless there's a warrant issued or an affidavit has been signed. If you're going to come onto my private property and seize my personal belongings, my personal effects, due process says that you need a warrant, you need a description of the vehicle or the, the item to be seized, and I have a right to a trial. If I'm breaking the law, an ordinance or not, an ordinance, if I'm breaking an ordinance, I'm breaking the law, then I have a right to a trial. Plain and simple. If I'm breaking the law, if I were to seize a vehicle because I stopped them for no proof of insurance, I have the right to do that as a law enforcement officer. For two reasons. One is they violated the law. Operating a motor vehicle without proof of insurance. Second is that I can't allow that vehicle to stay on the road because now I know as a law enforcement officer, that that vehicle does not have insurance. And if I let them take off, I'm personally liable, and so is my department. So I take that vehicle off the road. However, they have due process. They can come to court, take their case. The judge deems that, oh no, they had insurance, but they couldn't prove it, release their vehicle. Understand what I'm saying, gentlemen? I mean, if I don't have due process, then what do I have now? Gentleman stated that, well, we're going to make it better. We're going to have to say we can put up a six-foot fence. Well, what constitutes a fence? Let's let's make that clear now, please. We we have an ordinance. For we do. Okay, uh, I can put up a six-foot fence around my property and keep vehicles behind that. Is that correct? Okay, so I can put up a six-foot barbed wire fence. That's not what constitutes a fence now? Our ordinance. Our ordinance. Our ordinance. An ordinance. Wood, or it's be slatted, um, a hurricane.
chain fence or right there? With, with the slat. So a chain link fence will do it. Will a field fence do it? I can't. It's chain linked. Got to have slats. Got to have slats in it. There's slats? Yeah. Well, you can't see through. Well, can't a see chain through. link fence doesn't have slats in it. You, you can't get them. Get them. And it says that in the order. Okay, well, that, that's fine and dandy. But who is to say what is to be seized? And then at the owner's expense, you're taking something from me that I already own. And the tow truck driver obviously is going to want to make money. He'd be glad. Like he's, he'd be glad to come get that vehicle. And the other vehicle. But if I wanted to get rid of that vehicle and be glad that you come and got it for me, then I would have called them and basically sold it for scrap myself and made some money rather than cost me money. That's very easy to do. And most people know that you could do that. I could scrap a vehicle that's in my yard and make a couple hundred dollars maybe then pay a tow truck driver $160, and I believe that's what the going cost is right now, state regulated, to tow that vehicle. And to charge me storage every day that vehicle stays in his yard. Why would I pay all of that money if I wanted that vehicle to be gone when I could scrap it and make a couple hundred dollars right now, today? So y'all not making any sense by saying that. Another thing is that if the vehicle does get towed, and I'm working on that vehicle, this gentleman here, Mr. Talbot, has said that he's, he's working on a 65 pickup truck. Well, I worked on a 79 pickup truck. It took me two years. I didn't have the money to do it all at once. You know, it's a process, a long process sometimes. Some people just can't afford to do it all at once. Now, if I'm in the middle of restoring a vehicle that I have done, and it took me two years to do it, you take this part and send it to whoever needs to rebuild it for you, if you can't do it. When you get that back, you send another, and another, and another. Pretty soon the vehicle is stripped down, it's on blocks, you're looking at a body with, I don't know what kind of I need, I need to ask you to wrap it up. Okay, okay. but what I'm saying is that it took me two years to rebuild a vehicle, to, re, to restore one. After I was done, it looked beautiful. However, during that process, the gentleman could have come and said, no, that vehicle, is, it's on blocks, it's got to go. And I wouldn't have had any say so, no recourse. So where is my due process then? Okay, in, in the ordinance, the ordinance, the ordinance says to, to provide for opportunity for a hearing by written request received by the enforcing agent within seven days. Okay, so well, the vehicle you do get... impoundment, is that correct? No, no, no. no. The, impound... the impound is the last resort. There's a whole process before we ever get to that. There's a definition that talks about what is an abandoned junk vehicle. Okay. And, and there's some things that you can do with respect to the abandoned junk vehicle. Uh, I mean, I guess what we ought to do is, I mean, if everybody, if you had a copy of the ordinance and read it, Okay. You would probably find that your vehicle you restored is not part of this order. Okay. I, I, called in on and so, I, I and that. and so consequently, good. let's say, for example, you have a vehicle that's a public nuisance, and it's not it's not the one you're restoring. <laughs> Compliance officer comes out there, makes a determination, sends you a letter. You have the right for a hearing. If you choose not, there's a certain amount of period that's got to elapse, and he's got to send you another letter. The process of getting the vehicle towed is the last resort. There's a long list of, of things that have to happen. There's corrective measures that can he can ask you to do and resolve the issue. I mean, it's not it's not just so cut and dry that somebody comes out and says, I don't like that vehicle, it's got to go, and then they send a tow truck. I mean, there's a process, there's a definition of what is an abandoned vehicle. It's 25 years old, it's antique, it's not abandoned vehicle. I mean, I, I guess what I'm telling you is there's, we're not in the. We're not just trying to get rid of vehicles. We're trying to get rid of particular vehicles that are nuisances to the public. And and, and if you're restoring an antique, that's not what. That's not what we're talking. About. I, 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 and and so, I understand and, that. And, and, and hold, think, hold, 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 we're we're getting way off track here. This this has. We're, we shouldn't even be discussing this because <laughs> if y'all want to go to the ordinance committee with this, that's what y'all can have discussion on the ordinance. This is strictly. 
that say a secured yard. They haul out. We're not changing the ordinance. We're not. We're not make, re, recreating something here. We're strictly saying that if You're a record company long. comes that's and picks it up, they long. have to take it to a secured yard. Okay. They can't just go park it out in a field somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's already in the ordinance. That's not what we're doing tonight. That's already part of the ordinance. So we're, we're strictly tonight saying that it has to go to a secured yard. So if it's a record company that wants to get on the roll list, right? if they want to be a record company to pick it up, they have to have a secure yard to take this stuff to. They can't just take it out in the field. You know, that's all tonight is about. That's it. You know, if you want to see when Mr. Mike and them are having the next ordinance committee meeting and have a discussion on this and bring it up, he's already said he's more than welcome to do that, and, and he will open that up on the floor for y'all. So if you if you have a, something you want to say about why you don't want it in a secure yard or why you don't want a licensed record service to pick it up, that's what tonight's about. The ordinance... The whole ordinance needs to go to the ordinance committee because we we can't discuss that because it's not on the agenda. We we have to discuss what is on the agenda, and that's strictly secured yard. Thank you. If there was a precedent set by the state 20 years ago. Yes, sir, I understand that, but we're discussing a tow truck coming to get my property. So I can compare that. Which well, they can do the right now. I own, well, you say that because it's law, it's right. We could own slaves not too long ago because law I mean, but right. You're, right? You're, you're, you're comparing things that. Hey, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just because it's law doesn't make it right. Hey, just because it's law doesn't mean you can come take what belongs to me, whether it's a certified tow truck or not. If I don't like your lawnmower and I hire somebody to come get it, but I tell you, Mr. R, don't worry about it. I've got a certified truck to haul it in. I'm going to take care of it and put it inside a fence, and you come pay me $500, you can have it back. What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to call the law and have me arrested for stealing, whether it was a certified truck or not. Just because you have the word law to use along with this doesn't make it right. We're, we're not, tonight we're not giving them the authority to do that. That's already that. part of the ordinance. We just found out about this. Well, so it's this been an ordinance can. for 20 years. That doesn't mean we know about it. <laughs> Why are you enforcing it now if it's been a 20 year ordinance? I don't, I don't, I think the biggest thing is just making sure that we, right now, all we're looking at is, I mean, I, I, I'm glad that it's been brought up. We can go to the ordinance committee now and we well, can the discuss we all want these our issues. Boy, sir, to get that started, and this is the first opportunity I've had to do so. Yeah, but we, we can't state. legally change the ordinance I'm tonight. Right. We can't do nothing about to, that. I said tonight we can't change the ordinance, but we can bring it to their attention that we expect to see the ordinance change because my private property isn't subject to my neighbor's opinion. Because at the end of the day, wealthy folks, they might be able to put a six foot fence around their yard. But I can't. I understand. And neither is it your right to tell me I have to. I own my property. The parish does not. And so that's our point of being here is to let you know we're just finding out about it and we won't have it. So we're going to go as far as we need to go to get the ordinance changed. 
I've heard some folks on this board say that we owe it to our neighbors to make them happy. No, sir, I don't. If they don't like my yard, they don't have to look at it. Now, I'm a neighbor conscious person. I, I can tell you stories about going out of my way to my neighbors to help them out. But you cannot dictate to me by law that I have to keep my neighbor happy. You cannot do that, whether it be with a certified tow truck or not. And yes, sir, I'm sure you told them coming to be tickled to death to come get those vehicles. Absolutely, it's free money at the expense of free American citizens. And we have the right to our private property, and you don't have to like it. You have the right to your property. I have the right to my property, but you do not have the right to dictate to me what I do with my property. I'm a Christian. I hope to, I hope and pray that everyone becomes a Christian, but I don't dictate to them by law that they have to be one. <coughs> Their choice. You can't dictate by law what I do with my private property. You may have that word to use, but that doesn't mean it's right. That's all I have to say. All right. All right. Does anyone else have anything to say about the secured fence? Oh, you don't screw it up now. I'm sorry. That's right. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. First thing I'm not going to talk about, Jordan, is because we all know it's wrong. Theft is theft. The problem with this is whenever they come get your property, and they put it in that secured location, they've been known to sell parts off of these things, depending on the value of the car. But you can get your car back as long as you give us the money that we didn't want you to have, and that's called extortion. That's just not the nice way to put it. It's just like this, look, yes, sir. Name and address. Oh, Gaden Smith, 9295 North Street. I figure y'all are all Thank you. We, we need a photo record. We need a photo record. But uh, with that said, it's just like the little old lady who wants to keep her car. My daddy grew up during the Great Depression. They saved everything. That was security to them. They made a little money off of this. Let's just let the old lady die and let her sons take care of the car. But again, I'm against the secure location because if they see the right car and this guy coming from the state, and I've dealt with people from the state. I dealt with one guy that was a nice guy who was going to help me with my trike all the way through. Then he went to Afghanistan and I had to deal with a man that come from the anal region. Everything that had to happen was a nightmare for me. Now, this guy coming from the state to view whether my vehicle is trash or not, he might cop an attitude on me. And now I have nowhere to stand except go for the extortion right. That's all I got to say. Now, I've got a lot to say about the uh, ordinance, but we're not talking about that tonight. I'm Thank against, you. you're looking for a way to get rid of the cars at no cost to you, but at the cost of the people that own it originally. And that's wrong. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. you. No, I'm not going to argue about the ordinance either. Because apparently it's already there. I disagree with it. I think it's unconstitutional. We say the pledge, yet we throw 30 minutes later, we're going to put all these veterans out. We don't care about their right. That's the purpose of the tea bag I give you. And then we say a prayer to the good Lord. And I hope everybody was sincere with that prayer. But then you turn right around and 15 minutes later, you're judging the neighbor. You're judging stuff that he has in his yard that he worked and paid for. And I hope he didn't steal it. But you're judging him. And how would any one of you men up there feel, or any of you women feel, if I judged... And I come in there and says, your wife is ugly. I'm a surgeon. I'm a doctor. Let's have her redone. Oh, you can get her back if you pay the surgeon bill, but if you don't want to pay the surgeon bill, we get to get the seller for slave trade. It's the same right. principle. Hold up, James. They might be taking that serious for you. Yeah, they might be wanting to hire me to take their wife off or their husband. Uh, so you need to think about that for once. You're judging. And the Bible says you shouldn't judge. And you are. You judge. 
But, okay, the law is passed since, what, 97? We've had no issues, so why don't you just let that dog lie and don't say anything about it? But then you turn right around and you say, the law is there. Well, look, I've been fighting an issue with the law. There's been laws about dropping sewage on my property. There's been laws about contamination. And Scooter knows all about it, and Channel 9 does too. You might have seen me on TV. But yet, we haven't enforced that law. It's been in effect. You can't you dump even fresh water intentionally on a person's property. You can't drop raw sewage on a person's property. But if you don't believe me, y'all can come to my house, brother, and I can show you. We, right, got we're, we, we need to stay on this topic right here. Yes, sir. Well, I'm using that as a scenario. If they hadn't been enforcing this car issue, keep quiet about it. Why should Liberty prepare to bring it up? Now I know we should all be responsible. We really should. And I don't really have it. I've got one junk car, but it's locked up in the garage, and it's more valuable than any car that was brought here. So, but it's inside the garage. My mother's old car is sitting in front of her garage. Some people are going to say it's junk. Some people it's not, but I've talked to a couple of attorneys. What happens if I put a for sale sign on that car, and I'm willing to sell it for $25,000? Now, if somebody don't buy it, I can't put a time limit on when I'm going to sell that car. But I want 25000 and you can take it. So now, do we go to arbitration? Who decides that I can't sell that car because I'm asking too much? Yeah, I want 25000 for it. Now, I wouldn't pay ten for it. So then, see, you're getting all this legal stuff that's going to I think it's going to bite people's in the rear end. So I think we ought to just forget it and just let the dog lie and don't make no issue. Thank y'all. Thank you. Last, last comment right here. We have to close the public hearing. Gordon Courtney, 31246. Old Baton Rouge Highway, uh, Albany, or Hammond, Louisiana. Um, I don't have a dog in the hunt. Currently, I only have one old vehicle on one piece of my property. All the rest of them uh, were victims of the flood. Uh, it is an, it's an antique vehicle, as Mr. Talbot says. That's 79, uh, and the ordinance clearly states that. Uh, I agree the ordinance needs a lot of work, and I'm offering myself to Mr. Mack to work with him and the ordinance committee in any way he sees fit. But concerning what is being discussed tonight, I have a lot of questions about the ordinance, but the question I have tonight is, you're talking about a certified record service bringing the vehicle to a, uh, a secure facility. There's no mention in the ordinance or in the amendment to the ordinance about any caps on what that record service can charge or what the uh, storage fees can be uh, to the individual that owns the vehicle. And my concern is it opens the door for anybody to make a, a, a claim that you're going to need to pay me $900 for this car to get it back. And the car might be only worth $300. Now, I do know in the state provides statute, there is a, um, a clause in there about the vehicle's assessed value being $500 or less before they can uh, have it crushed. But my question tonight is, has any consideration been given to what's going to be the, uh, the fees charged by the record service and or for storage? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we are now closing the public hearing. What, wait, 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 wait. The thing that you need to read by title.
motion by Mr. Talbot, second by Mr. King. Any comment from the council? Mr. Mayor. I just want to say a few more things. Uh, reiterate the fact that I'm willing to hear every single resident in Livingston Parish's uh, view on the original ordinance that was adopted in 1997. A couple of things I'm against is um, I'm, I'm dead set against charging the citizens of Livingston Parish 10 cents to move these vehicles off their property. I was, it was under my understanding that the record services were going to tow the vehicles uh, and if the people didn't want them anymore, that they were going to salvage the vehicle and that was going to be the fee for pulling it off the property. That's exactly right. So if, if that ain't right, no, that's right. we're we going to get that right. I mean, I mean, saying, because basically, I mean, this now, well, I got a couple more things. One thing. If you, my personal view, you got a couple of cars in the yard, ain't hurting anything. I don't see a problem with it. What this is about is cleaning up junk in Livingston Parish. Making our parish, in my opinion, a better place to live. I, I think that any elected official, any administration guy, they're willing to work with every resident of Livingston Parish, and they have proved that over the last 21 years that this was adopted. I would also like to say that a lot of the comments that was made tonight, you can't just go take people's, what I call, valuable, private property and do what you want with it. I mean, there's laws against that, okay? The state defines, th this, this, is, this is not just, the state defines with the term junk, okay? <laughs> the term junk, I'd like to read it to you. This is very important to a lot of people in Livingston Parish. The term junk, wrecked or used automobiles or motor vehicles as used herein shall mean any motor vehicle which is totally inoperable, left unattended, or in portion of any occupied lot, neutral ground, street or sidewalk, and is so damaged or dismantled as to be a total loss. The term total loss shall mean that the cost to repair a damaged or dismantled motor vehicle exceeds the junk value of said vehicle. As to not just some figure that some guy threw out the top of his head, okay? But as determined by any recognized national appraisal book. I think, I think what we need to do, since the citizens of Livingston Parish is, is extremely concerned about this original ordinance, is go back and revisit it. And, and, and together, deem if, if changes need to be made. Um, so, I, I still say that the changes being made tonight are good, being that if you go back and read the original, there's already a compliance officer. It's already in the current ordinance how to notify the resident, work the situation out if possible, and if not, permit whatever record service they so choose to go get your vehicle off that property. That's already in the books. Now, I think these are positive changes. That's all I got to say. If everybody disagrees, I mean, I'm good with that, but. I, Mr. David, you have a comment? I'm good. I made none. Any more comments, Dean? I got some, but uh, I'm going to call for the question. I mean, yeah. Let's get right, call. call for the question. Ms. Sandy, uh, please call for the vote. Thank we you. had a motion by Mr. Talbot and a second by Mr. King. Mr. David? No. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Washington? Yes. Mr. Gerland? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. 
Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Talbert? Yes. All right, before we move to item 12, we have a couple of cup copies of the ordinance up here. So before y'all leave, if some of y'all want to get this ordinance copies when this meeting's over with, we'll be glad to hand them over to y'all. You could also get them on our webpage. We have the bottom of our webpage. Yeah. You want to go make make about 12 copies? Chairman, come in. Come in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, quickly. Um, you know, I, I was here and listen, and one thing that really struck a, a chord was when the gentleman referred to the government, you know, no matter what you call it, stealing is stealing. And one thing that really, really I find passionate is the government, is the, uh, the property, individual property ownership rights. And I've said this, you've heard me say this before, and I believe this with all my heart. What built America was individual property ownership rights. A man can keep what's his, and no one else, including the government, can take that away. Unless he don't pay and, and the only purpose of a governed governed body is for one thing: is not to take your rights away, but to keep someone else from taking your rights away. And I've seen cars over in my district. Or trees are growing through the car and, and yeah, rats and snakes and you say well that's my property you're right but this neighbor right beside it his rights are being uh, 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 taken away because of the other person that, that won't keep their place up it's not a question of and it's not a question of uh, just being a bad neighbor it's just it, it, it's it's out of control and so this person's rights are being taken away. So in that case, government's job is to protect everybody's liberty, not just the person who has that tree growing through the yard with snakes and rats. Um, you've, you've got to be willing to not infringe on other people's rights. And, and look, I am, you can ask anybody on this council, I am the most libertarian anti-government involved in people's lives than anyone but I have seen it where people let their sewer run onto the neighbor's rig and they don't have the right to do that because it take only because it takes away from their neighbor's right to have free to have fresh air or or, or snake or yeah. yard now I'm inside the city limits of Denham it's tight we have neighbors next to the door, and then these neighbors here live in Albany, and they say, we don't ever see that kind of problem happen, and you probably never will. But over in the city where there's one neighbor next to another, these ordinances help us. Um, and, you know, you have to at some point just trust that you have good members sitting on the board, and I'd say that we do revisit these ordinances, and we put in there before any vehicle can be towed, you must have multiple plans of appeal, and even this council could be the appeal court or appeal process before a vehicle could get towed. And, and, and I, you know, uh, so that, that's all I wanted to say about that. So I'm proud of that. that was a okay. Good. That all right, let's move on to item 12. Uh, uh, the, that's on the sewer. That's on the sewer. All right, well, we'll go to 71. I have yeah, talked to uh, yeah. some residents down there. And we decided to delay this and take it off the agenda for tonight. Okay, the table item 12. Yes. Item 13. Uh, do we have any trailers? We have one. Did we have? Okay, so item 13 is we don't have anything for it. 14, District Attorney report. I'm assuming we have no report. Committee report. Mr. Mack. Would you like to tell us when the next ordinance committee might be? I think that we should talk about a date and set the date to discuss this. Um, <coughs> what would be a good time for you, Mr. Bubba? Oh. I know the 4th of July is coming up. I know a lot of people are taking vacation and fishing trips and all this wonderful good stuff. So I'm going to try. The third Wednesday of the month are busy. We can't do Yeah, we have a meeting that. Mosquito Bay, but your third week. Like you should third have. Win. You know, so we know what it is. 
I'm just not picking on you, but yeah, I was. <laughs> Second Thursday? Second Thursday is going to be what day? The 12th. That's when we get the meeting done at the Laurel Ridge thing. Oh, no. What's, What's the calendar? calendar? Third Thursday. How about the third Thursday of July? The third Thursday of July? Yes. If you all are okay with that. Six o'clock. Third yeah. Thursday, July 6th? Yep. July 19th, 6 o'clock, will be the Ordinance Committee meeting. July 6th? 19th. 19th. At 6 o'clock. At 6 p.m. But we'll send you an email reminder. Thank you. It'll be on the 15th of July. Okay. Finance Committee, Mr. Gerlinghouse? Uh, finance Committee, there's no new news. They didn't meet, so they'll meet, what, the 9th of July? Well, Next meeting. Well, so, well, uh, I'm sorry, yes, the 12th. So, I, I don't have any comments. All right, item 16, councilman comment. Do we have any comment? We have an addendum. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we do. We have one addendum we need to do. Uh, this is uh, 81 rescind LPR number 18-190, authorizing a servitude revocation to Shriver Investment Properties located on Jubin Road and Council District 5 adopted on June 14, 2018 at a regular meeting of the Parish Council. Motion by Mr. Talbot and second by Mr. King. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? If I'd have been here for that meeting, I wouldn't let y'all mess this up. Oh, you don't have uh, it, but I didn't show up. You can have that denim stuff. Right? Any okay. comments? Thanks. Ms. Sandy, call a vote. Mr. Mack? Yes. Mr. R? Yes. Mr. Wascom? Yes. Mr. Gerlinghouse? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Talbert? Yes. Addendum? Yes, I'm sorry, I guess. Addendum A2, Planning Commission Recommendation. Driver Investment Properties, Inc. Center Line Engineering, Servitude, Revocation, Introduction of Ordinance, Jubin Road, Section 5. T7SR3, Council District 5. Got a motion? Will you read by title? This is proposed ordinance 18 20. This is an ordinance revoking the dedication of Bannon Quick Planning in favor of Shriver Investment Properties LLC. A 40 foot, eight, all parts of servitude identified by the crosshatch portion as shown on the flat by the platform. All parts of servitude to be revoked. Got a motion by Mr. Harris, second by Mr. Gerlinghouse. Any comment? Ms. Sandy, call the vote. Yes. Mr. Mike. Mr. Ard? Yes. Mr. Wasco? Yes. Mr. Gerlinghouse? Yes. Mr. Keene? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Talbert? Yes. Pass. Now, con Councilman, comment? I'm sorry for interrupting anybody. Mr. Mack? I just, I just wanted to reiterate the fact that this coming Wednesday is the 4th of July. And despite, uh, you know, the country that we live in is not perfect, I still believe that it's one of the greatest countries and we're, we live in a country that's free and that we need to remember the men and women that fought so hard to give us the freedoms that we have this 4th of July. And uh, I just want to say that I appreciate every one of them, all the veterans, all the people uh, that passed away, every single one of them. I, I love this country. I love this parish. I love the people of it. Love my God. I'm thankful to live in a country where we're free to worship God of our choice. Amen. And the ones that are currently served. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. All of them. I want, I want to make a move. I just want to say that we uh, had a scale baby meeting last week, too? Two weeks. Two weeks ago. And we have secured the Watson Branch of the Library the third Wednesday of every month at 6 o'clock have our meeting so that if people want to come comment or come see or listen or sit in we're going to have a fixed location through the end of the year it'll be the third wednesday of every month at six o'clock at the watson branch 
of the Lewis and Parish Library. Uh, we got a mess with that library, Millie? Good one, Avery. I got a motion from Mr. Wascombs to uh, adjourn, second from Mr. Gerlinghouse. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. <laughs>